if I could have everybody stand and we'll lead us off with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated, everyone. Bellevue is blessed to be affiliated with several great financial institutions and Cobalt Credit Union, as I mentioned earlier, one of Bellevue's great community-minded businesses, and we appreciate their hospitality this morning. Please welcome Robin Larson, Chief Operations Officer with the Cobalt Credit Union. Robin. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of our Cobalt Credit Union employees, our board of directors, our members, and our SAC Foundation, I am honored to welcome you to this year's Bellevue Chamber of Commerce Veterans Day Breakfast. Our credit union has a long history of serving local military families and veterans. It's something we've been doing since 1949. Our name may have changed, but our mission has not. We will continue to support our military with programs and initiatives that lift them up socially and economically. We are proud to sponsor and take an active role in events like we are enjoying here today. Events that bring our community together and provide a moment for us to celebrate our freedom and say thank you to those that help to make that freedom a reality. Thank you for joining us today as we pay tribute to those who have given so much. For the past 15 years, we've held an essay account petition for our area 5th and 6th graders in the Bellevue metro area. The essay contest is sponsored by the University of Nebraska Omaha Bachelor of Multidisciplinary Studies and is supported by the Bellevue Leader and Bellevue Public Schools. The winner of this year's essay, is, this year's essay contest is Coda Barmore, a 5th grader at Two Springs Elementary. Please welcome Coda to the podium to read her essay. Veteran. A veteran is someone who fights for our country, freedom, and what's right. Fighting not only for our freedom, but for the country and people they love. They fight to keep that flag held high, to symbolize America and the freedom you fought for. Proudly, we stand together as Americans, fighting side by side. America thanks and honors every life you've saved, every flag you've kept held high, the wars you fought, the missions you served, and that right there takes dedication. As we step back and admire the lives you saved, we also need to keep the ones who lost their brave lives fighting for us in our prayers. We will forever keep those who you lost in our hearts. We cherish and will not forget the amazingly brave people who had the guts to stand up for our country, for our rights, for America. That's one thing I won't forget. We are so proud to be Americans with the freedoms we have in our lives. I just want to say I'm so thankful to be blessed with the country we have and its freedoms. Thank you, veterans, for helping shaping the United States into the amazing country it is today. Thank you for keeping that flag held high. Thank you, Coda. That was fantastic, wasn't it? That one rose to the very top. Uh, when the Bellevue leader does the judging, this one just hit at home. Uh, you were the best. Uh, but if I can now uh, uh, welcome Molly Calgold, the manager of DCS UNO Offit Office, UNO Bachelor of Multidisciplinary Studies, essay sponsor for To the Podium. Thank you for a fantastic essay. It was really well written. Your words really convey a message that is patriotic and supports our veterans, so we really appreciate it. On behalf of the University of Nebraska at Omaha, um, I am pleased to present to you as the essay contest winner this envelope with good stuff and also this bag of swag. So hopefully when you're thinking of your education in the future, you'll think of UNO. So go Mavericks, there you Thank go. You. Again, congratulations, Coda, and thank you to the University of Nebraska Omaha Bachelor of Multidisciplinary Studies. We gotta shorten that up, Molly. <laughs> For your support of the essay contest. Uh, if you could please rise and welcome Chaplain uh, Captain John Gillespie, and he'll read us the prayer. And then following the invocation, the head table should proceed to the breakfast line, and everyone else just follow in suit. So, Chaplain. All right, so I'm the last thing keeping you from breakfast, so buckle up. All right, if you choose, I invite you to pray with me at this time. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we want to acknowledge your goodness and protection here today. We have the opportunity and privilege to live in this great country. And these opportunities are afforded to us because of the long line of men and women who have stood courageously to fight back against the enemies who would seek to destroy us. These veterans who we are here to honor do not seek praise, but rather we recognize that they were merely sacrificing themselves for a call beyond themselves and a duty to which they swore to uphold. We are thankful that you have given us such men and women in the past, and we are thankful for the men and women who serve this great country today. It is because of these giants who now we get to stand upon their shoulders and continue to fight to which they have begun that we serve in this free land. And so, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would continue to call out the courageous among this country to continue to serve and fight. I ask that you would continue to bless us with this great military, uh, the greatest military this world has ever seen. And I ask that you would continue to bless our country. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, good, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for braving the cold weather to, to be out here to uh, honor veterans on, on this bright but quite cold day. Um, first of all, you know, I know uh, since I am the weather guy, I'm going to take some flack for that. <laughs> so I have to share with you what, what we always say, you know, when, uh, when a wing commander, um, flying wing commander, you know, complains about that. We say we're, we're in sales, we're not in production. So we'll have to talk to the chaplain about the actual conditions we're experiencing. <laughs> But uh, thanks, Jim, for the introduction again, and, and thank you to the Chamber and um, Mayor Sanders for uh, allowing me to be a part of the festivities today. Um, as, as we all know, tomorrow marks the uh, 100th anniversary uh, since the guns fell silent to uh, end the war to end all wars. Um, and so that, that's what started off the celebration. And uh, so the Great War uh, came to an end, but it, it shaped many things that uh, still affect our lives today. And, uh, you know, from long-standing alliances to the creation of the first weather service which is you know particularly pertinent to what I do um, and and that that was uh, part of the Army Signal Corps way back in 1917 uh, and so we started in the Army as as did the rest of the Air Force and so what is now the 557th weather wing what used to be the Air Force weather agency which many of you probably are, are a little bit more familiar with uh, has that heritage that dates back to the First World War and it, it was uh, it was because of the First Army and the American Expeditionary Force, which had its headquarters in France, that we have a fleur de lis on our unit patch. So that's, that's how we trace our heritage way back to that point, um, because their headquarters, like, like I said, was in, was in France. And so, you know, others who will speak this morning will, will talk about uh, just how much the veterans have sacrificed so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have today. Um, and, and that's absolutely true. And then I'd just like to share a little, uh, you know, example from the from the Great War related to the function of, you know, the weather wing that just that brings that home a little bit more. Um, weather conditions during uh, World War One were harsh. Same thing you could say in World War Two. Uh, winter temperatures reached zero, so we're not we're not quite there today, but we're get, we're getting close. Um, you know, and so the the men in the trenches they had to they had to deal with that sort of condition. So lots of times, and frequently all winter long, they had extensive frostbite. Um, during the spring and early summer months, then it would rain heavily. The temperatures hadn't warmed up really, uh, and, and so they were prone to having to stand in the water. And uh, you know, so muddy field conditions, frostbite, standing in the water, so a lot of them ended up with trench foot and uh, you know, led to amputation of limbs. Uh, so, it's just another one of the sacrifices that people have to make in combat, you know, and it takes tremendous courage to face the enemy in combat. And I know we have at least one uh, gentleman here that has a couple Purple Hearts. There may be more in the audience, so it definitely takes courage to do that. It takes, it takes a, a different sort of courage, perhaps, and tremendous determination to face life in the trenches day in and day out. You, you know what awaits you. It's certainly not pleasant, uh, but, but you're sacrificing nonetheless uh, for your country. And so, you know, I, I ask myself, what sustains soldiers in moments like those? And uh, what combination of attri attributes enables them to carry on in those sorts of situations, whether facing the enemy or just, you know, having to face a situation they really would rather not be in? And, you know, there's, there's no single answer. We, we all know that. But parts of the answer might include a faith in God, love of family and country, um, a belief that, you know, the mission that they're doing is supremely important, um, a willingness to sacrifice. 
and uh, a connection with their fellow, fellow soldiers, right? And, and an understanding and a camaraderie and a knowledge that, you know, if, if they fail, maybe the, the, those to their right or left are not gonna make it. Um, and so, so they keep pushing on. And so after the, the war to end all wars, you know, those that did make it through, those, those that did uh, manage to make it home, they returned home to the U.S., many as in a private citizen role. You know, because we all start out as citizens, then we, we, we raise our hand and uh, put on the uniform for a time, and then we return to being citizens. And, and those that return use their experience and skills to, uh, to better the communities uh, to which they returned, right? Um, so their contributions to America didn't stop once they took the uniform off. Um, and that tradition of, of selfless service, you know, that was exhibited by those soldiers 100 years ago, it continues clearly to till the present day. Today, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and, and Marines share many of the same attributes exhibited by those, those uh, brave soldiers 100 years ago. Um, and, and as they serve today, they experience what it means to, to belong to a, a valued team doing meaningful work for their nation. And uh, that's why many of them stay in and make it a career, because they, they know it's important. And, and in fact, when, when, uh, when they separate or retire, that's frequently what they miss the most is the connection they have with the other airmen, the, the people they're working with or whichever service you happen to be in, and, and the fact that they, they were contributing to that really important mission. Um, and so when they retire or separate, it's exactly these same attributes that I mentioned before that they bring to the communities uh, that welcome them. And uh, they also, many of them bring a strong desire to be a part of a team doing important work for society now. Um, it's a different way to contribute. Um, so today, al along with others, I'm, I'm privileged to join uh, the Parade Grand Marshal General Cohen, uh, you know, on the reviewing stand here in a bit, to honor our veterans and, uh, and their families for the sacrifices and service to our great nation. And uh, General Cohen's service and contributions, like that of veterans before him, uh, did not end after 35 years of uh, combined service wearing the uniform. Um, and so you have continued to serve and uh, in leadership roles in the community and the community is better off because of, of what you've done. So sir, I thank you for your dedicated service to our uh, military and community and for being a role model of how a veteran can successfully transition um, once the uniform career is over. And to the rest of the civic leaders that are uh, present here, thank you for making this community so welcoming to veterans. I know in my particular wing, a lot of people come here they like it, they like the work they're doing, they retire and they find a way to stay here and integrate into the community. So thank you for helping them do that. So again, thanks for allowing me to be a part of today's celebration uh, as together we salute all the wonderful veterans and families uh, for their many contributions both in and out of uniform. Thank you. Uh, just so you know how much I really wanted to be here to participate, just two days ago I was in California at Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara. I could have stayed there. I did have the opportunity, but uh, I chose to come back to Bellevue in the 10 degree weather for the uh, Veterans Day Parade today because there's no place that I'd rather be. So uh, good morning everyone. Jim again, thanks for your introduction and uh, thanks to the entire chamber for putting on this event. Uh, Mayor Sanders and other distinguished guests, uh, we're lucky to be joined today by one of Nebraska's longer serving uh, veterans, and that's Brigadier General Paul Cohen, who began his military service in 1960 at the height of the Cold War as a member of the Strategic Air Command, where General Cohen stood toe to toe with the Soviet Union on a daily basis, ensuring that the United States Air Force, and in fact the country was ready and equipped uh, to prosecute and win a global nuclear war, if it should ever come to that. And we don't think about that much today, uh, but that's what was on everyone's minds uh, back in the 1960s. So General Cohen commanded at multiple Air Force organizational levels and culminated his military service as the second most senior National Guard official in the state of Nebraska. General Cohen was the first non-aviator who was promoted to general officer in the Nebraska Air Guard, and he paved the way for other support officers to lead at the highest level, just like he did. General Cohen, on behalf of the 162,000 joint war fighters, men and women serving all across the world, uh, I thank you for your 35 years of military service and your continued support, and I'm honored to share the reviewing stand with you today. Now, as uh, most of you know, uh, November 11th is a day that we honor the men and women uh, who have fought and are still fighting uh, America's wars. Tomorrow is the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I. 
And so first and foremost, uh, I'd like to recognize those among us who are part of the great brotherhood and sisterhood that we call the U.S. military. And that's our veterans, our active duty servicemen and women, our guardsmen and reservists. Your service and sacrifice is what keeps our country safe and free. And if you're able to, uh, please stand and be recognized. Thanks very much for all of your service, both past and present. Now, no matter which branch of the military you may have served in, and whether your job path, uh, whatever your job path was, uh, or how many years you served, uh, committing yourself to service in the military was certainly a brave and selfless act, an act that came with very few guarantees. Where would you be assigned? Where would you see combat? Would you see combat? Would you return home wounded from battle? Or would you even return home at all? These are all unknowns when you raised your right hand and swore an oath to defend the nation. You knew what the risks were, but you accepted those risks so that others wouldn't have to. President FDR said that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than that fear. And this was true on the first Armistice Day in 1918 and remains true today for those of you who move together towards danger when others may be moving away from it. America can sleep peacefully at night knowing that our country is protected by volunteers who comprise the best trained, best equipped, and most powerful military force in anywhere in the world. Thank you again, all of you, for your service, both past and present. Now, I'd also like to thank your families, the mothers and fathers who tearfully send their children off to war, the husbands and wives who are waiting dutifully for their loved ones to return home, the children who sometimes are growing up away from mom and dad, and the friends who also keep vigil for a safe return. There is a tremendous and often overlooked labor of love that's performed every day in this country by the family and friends who serve as caregivers to our nation's wounded, injured, and ill veterans. And of course, today we especially hold dear to us our Gold Star families who truly know the depth of sacrifice, service, and loss. It's important to remember that the veterans uh, are defending the United States 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, 366 during leap years, and their heroism has been demonstrated time and time again from the American Revolution to the Cold War, the Global War on Terrorism. Sometimes their sacrifice goes unnoticed by those who enjoy the security that their service provides. And today we honor that sacrifice. So if you want to see the greatness of our country, just look around the room from the oldest among us uh, to the youngest among us who, who spoke so uh, elegantly earlier today. The threat of imminent attack is not something that many Americans today outside of the military think about. Uh, but this is not true for the citizens in the countries of our allies, our allies who live in places like Israel or Poland or South Korea or many other areas of the world. Our freedom in America is free from worry. Our freedom from worry is a direct result of the men and women of United States Strategic Command and Offutt Air Force Base who are quietly doing their jobs every single day. 175,000 of the finest men and women uh, that we have to offer, they comprise the most powerful military command in the world. Those folks come from different states, different religions, different backgrounds, different incomes, all kinds of heritages. And then when they put on the nation's uniform, these differences disappear and we unite to, together to protect the United States and to defend our way of life. So our mission at STRATCOM of deterring strategic attack is something that you should never need to think about. When U.S. STRATCOM is successful in our most important mission, nothing happens. If you're going about your daily activities without worry of being attacked by another nation, then we're doing our job successfully. Deterrence is an active mission. It has to be practiced and it has to be communicated so that our adversaries know that we're ready and able to respond to any threat that comes our way. So if you want to see the greatness of our future, they'll be marching down Mission Avenue in just about a half hour from now. For hundreds of years, veterans have believed our nation, our ideals, and our way of life is worth fighting for. Veterans have endured long separation from their families, missed the births of many children, froze in sub-zero temperatures, baked in the desert, risked being wounded, and sometimes risked and even lost their lives. You cannot fight a war without soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. And while the utopian idea of society without war is certainly appealing, we should also not forget that wars in the past have liberated the oppressed, they've stopped genocide, 
and they've toppled terrorist groups who wish to do us harm. It's often been said that without our veterans, Americans would be speaking Russian or German or perhaps Japanese. But regardless of which view of alternative history you may choose, we do know that without our veterans, America would not be the America that we know today. So by being here today and taking time to reflect on the service and sacrifice of our veterans, you are demonstrating that you understand the truth that veterans know all too well. No one leaves the military unchanged. For some, there are physical injuries that drastically change life as they knew it in the blink of an eye. For others, the wounds may be invisible, but the pain may be very real. It isn't always an easy journey for our brave men and women as they work to overcome the challenges they face as a result of their service. But our veterans have never sought the easy path. Veterans have given us freedom, security, and the greatest nation on earth, and it's impossible for us to put a price tag on that. So we must remember them. We must appreciate them, and I am honored to salute the men and women who made this ceremony possible today. So thank you for joining me in honoring the men and women who served, and may God bless uh, each of you, all of our nation's veterans, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Cohen is an Offutt Advisory Council Executive Board member and co-commander of the 170th Group, Nebraska Air National Guard. He is an administrator for the Omaha Douglas County Public Building Commission. And then from 1950 to 1985, he served in the United States Air Force, six years active duty, and 29 years in the Air National Guard, which was National Guard, that was my background. Uh, he retired as a senior advisor in the Nebraska State Adjutant General. And then from 1984 to 2003, here's a little tidbit for you. Cohen also was an Omaha on-air personality on, on Light 96. So he should be good at this microphone here. But uh, please welcome Air General, Air General Paul Cohen to the podium. Oh my goodness. That, that stint at Light 96 is where I got the reputation of I never met a mic I didn't like. Um, yeah, it's true, and, and, and so for this audience, uh, I promise not to tell anybody, I was Paul James on Omaha's Light 96, the original member of the James Gang in the Metro, happy to be aboard, it's now 8.45, 9.45, and I gotta get going here or we're gonna be late. Uh, I, uh, I, I had a great speech, and, and you've all kind of messed it up for me, um, and I appreciate it. I'm humbled by the honor. Jim Bristow did not ask me to be the Grand Marshal, he told me. I got, I got an email from Jim and said, you are the Grand Marshal, be sure you're at, at, the, at the school at, at 7.30 on, on the 10th, have a nice day, goodbye. And yeah, free breakfast is what got it, Colonel, you're right. Uh, and, and, and so I've been thinking about this for, for a while. Uh, thank you to the previous speakers for all the kind words you said about me. This isn't about me. Today, as, as the Grand Marshal, I am humbled and honored to represent all the veterans and all those who are currently serving in this parade and in this celebration. I take that as a grave responsibility. I appreciate all the honors, but I also appreciate the responsibility. We're here to say thank you. And we should be saying thank you every day. There's no such thing as just a Veterans Day. We celebrate, as you've heard from previous speakers, the greatest, freest, sometimes rancorous society in the world. Uh, it was designed that way. We're still the grand experiment. The, the votes aren't in yet, Congressman, about how that all is, is going to turn out. Uh, it turns out well when people honor their history and learn it and know it and practice it. It turns out well when people go to the polls and vote. There are people in countries who are willing to risk their lives to go vote, and we have a large segment of our population that just can't seem to get out of the bedroom or the basement and go vote. That's not a good thing. That's not patriotic. That's not even responsible. So we have to keep encouraging that. And the example that's set by veterans should pave the way for that kind of community participation and political participation. Politics is not a four-letter word. We just take it that way. It doesn't need to be. It's important to us. So I'm going to get off of that speech and say back to where, where I was and 
And as Henry VIII said to all of his wives, I promise not to keep you long. Um, <laughs> the first four pages I'll just get rid of. Uh, today we're gathering to celebrate and commemorate our veteran service to our nation. You know, the city of Bellevue and the Bellevue community should be very proud of the heritage and, and being known as veterans, as the state's Veterans Day Parade. That's traditional, it's titled that way, as well it should be. This community probably is the most welcoming of, of any uh, in, in the entire nation. And beyond that, I have a personal interest in that you also have welcomed with open arms more Air Guards members and Army Guard members to your community as part of the 170th, as part of STRATCOM, uh, as part of the growing community that we have coming in here. And we appreciate that very much. You welcome the Guard and Reserve the same way you welcome the active force. That's remarkable, and we thank you for that. It's not done everywhere. Much appreciated. The United States has a long history of honoring and taking care of its past and present service members and their families, better than any nation in the world. But for a while, that reputation was tarnished. But we've striven to correct those mistakes. Following nearly every major conflict, our country festively welcomed service members back home with parades, picnics, and parties. And for a variety of reasons, not at all related to service and sacrifice of those who served, no such celebration marked the end of hostilities in Korea or Vietnam. Varying viewpoints on the success or failure of those ventures and the political furor surrounding them unfairly and needlessly penalized those troops and their families. In more recent times, the nation has rallied to show its admiration for our military members, and rightly so. Yellow ribbon events occur in, commu occur in communities all across the nation, welcoming back members of the Guard and Reserve. And here, around bases such as Offutt, there are signs in storefronts and in streets welcoming back individuals or units who have been deployed, which is constant. There's always lessons to be taken from events similar to this one. So let me take a minute and, and talk about a few that appeal to me. First, today, fewer than half of 1% of our nation's population currently protects the other 99.5%. Throughout our history, these brave men and women and those of you in the audience today have been the only weapon system that has never let us down. And we thank you for that. Second, we must never again shun or ignore our servicemen and women, our veterans, regardless of our personal feelings about the conflicts in which they were or are asked to serve by us through our elected officials. Third, no veteran should be homeless. Fourth, no veteran should be jobless nor treated unfairly because of his or her military service. And fifth, no veteran should find it difficult or frustrating to receive the very best medical and mental health care to treat them. Saying thanks for your service while welcomed is never enough. We need to show that we never forget their dedication the protection of our freedom. As the late President John F. Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Today, this parade is just one more example that Bellevue lives by its words and that this community does not take veteran service for granted. I'm proud to be part of this grand event Look forward to getting it underway, even at 12 degrees. So please stay warm. And I thank you again for this honor to be your Grand Marshal. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Paul, <clears throat> not only for your service, but for your, your participation here today. Um, really appreciate it. We have a token of our appreciation. A parka. Uh, a parka <laughs> or hand warmers. But uh, on behalf of the Bellevue Offit community, uh, just a small token of our appreciation for being the Grand Marshal, but also for your service here in our community. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your yes. So I guess next year we'll make sure that either the temperature's up or we get hand warmers for you. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Hopefully you had a great breakfast. I do want to thank uh, Bellevue Public Schools for putting on a good breakfast. Um, so if I can give them a round of applause. I know they're not out here, but thank you. Also, our, our host and good friend, Cobalt Credit Union, uh, Robin, thank you for uh, this morning, as well as all of our speakers. And then um, if you notice on the back of your programs, you've got some additional community supporters that are listed in there. And then without their support, the Veterans Day Parade doesn't happen. So I'd like to thank them, as well as the City of Bellevue and Offutt Air Force Base for their participation day. So before we leave this morning, there's one final tradition that we have. It's the annual reading of In Flanders Field. If I could have Mayor Sanders please join me at the podium here and lead us in the reading. Thank you, Jim Risto, and thank you for the Bellevue Chamber for continuing to do this Veterans Parade every year. It's been a real honor to be able to read this very difficult poem, <laughs> so thank you for allowing me to do that. But as I begin my last 30 days of my eight-year term, I do want to tell you to the Bellevue Offit community, this has been an extreme pleasure for me to serve you, so thank you very much. In Flanders Field. In Flanders' fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row by row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved, and we were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up your quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders field. Thank you, and don't forget to hug a veteran. Thank you. Thank you.